Welcome back. We're going to talk about uh, machines in the human body. And actually, our human body is a machine. It's just a very interesting machine because we also are able to rehab ourselves or heal ourselves. So um, that's how we kind of replace parts, although we also do that with surgery these days too. So anyways, let's look at uh, the body as a machine. So a machine is something used to increase mechanical advantage, meaning uh, we want to decrease the force that we have to apply to increase the, say, speed or acceleration. Machines function in four ways. They balance multiple forces. They enhance the force in an attempt to reduce total force needed to overcome a resistance. Uh, they enhance range of motion and speed of movement so that resistance may be moved further or faster than it um, the applied force, and they alter the resulting direction of the applied force. So within our musculoskeletal system, we have three machines. We have levers, which we'll talk about in great detail, wheel axles, and pulleys. And examples of those levers, you can think of, say, in any joint, uh, right? We have a center of rotation. So Examples of a lever are our joints. So any joint, we have the axis of rotation, say at our elbow joint, and then the bones are kind of the levers, and then the muscles are the load or the effort. Wheel axles, we have a few of those. One is if we do internal or external rotation at our glenohumeral joint, say to throw a ball, think about a pitcher, the uh, wheel is the forearm, kind of rotating where you're holding the baseball, and the axle is our humerus. So it gets a bit of a mechanical advantage there to throw the ball extremely fast. Examples of pulleys are the patella, which increases, changes the line of action of our quadricep muscle group and also increases our torque production of those muscles and say the lateral malleolus, which changes the line of action of our gastroxoleus complex. So lever systems. Um, humans move using a system of levers. They cannot be changed without surgery. So this is uh, something we can't crane, although you can increase, say, um, just being active will increase some of the, the anatomical pulleys in your body just by bone adaptation. Uh, the lever is a rigid bar that turns about an axis of rotation or a fulcrum, and the axis is the point of rotation about which the lever moves. So in the human body, um, the axis equals the fulcrum. And, and here we see the effort and the load. So the fulcrum would be the joint center. The uh, effort is our muscle and the load is what we're lifting. Levers rotate about an axis as a result of force or that effort being applied to cause its movement against the resistance or the load. Um, so bones re represent the bar, the joints are the axes, and the muscle contraction um, are the effort. So we have three classes of levers. Um, there's three things you need to know um, to determine the type of lever system. You need to identify the axis or the point of rotation. You need to know the point of the force application, which is typically the muscle insertion. So you can see here the biceps brachii. So A, elbow joint is the axis of rotation. Um, F, the point of application of our force is the insertion of our biceps brachii and then the point of the resistance application. So in this case, it's the weight of our forearm, or if we had a, we're holding a dumbbell, that would be the point of resistance application. So first class levers, the axis is between the force and the resistance. And you all know this, this is basically a teeter-totter, and you probably intuitively know if you're playing with um, somebody who's larger, then you want to push them further or closer to that, uh, the axis if you want to kind of balance with them. 
The second class lever, the resistance, is between the axis and the force. And the classic second class lever system is a wheelbarrow. So the wheels are the axis, the force, you're lifting the handles of the wheelbarrow, and your big load is in between. And this kind of lever system allows us to lift large resistance loads with a um, much smaller force. And then the third class lever system is when the force is closer to the axis than the resistance. And most of our joints um, are a third class lever system. And these are actually at a mechanical disadvantage. So for whatever you're lifting, the resistance, you have to generate a large, large force to move that resistance. So we, in general, are at a mechanical disadvantage. So let's go through them a little bit more. First class levers. Um, to produce balanced motion is when the axis is midway between the force and resistance and when they're equal. Um, they produce speed and range of motion when the axis is close to the force. So say the triceps in, in elbow extension. Um, and you produce force motion when the axis is close to the resistance or that would be a crowbar. So you, if you put the crowbar down and your resistance is really close and you move your force further away, you can gain a mechanical advantage. And in the triceps, the triceps are close to the elbow range or axis and you're holding a weight out in your hands so you can generate um, more speed and range of motion, which we do have at our elbow joint. One example in the human body is the head. So we have the axis, which is our, um, our atlas bone. And then we have the weight of the head, which is our resistance. And then the external um, muscles, extensor muscles, sorry, on, that create the force. So when we nod yes and no, that is an example of the first class lever system. Second class levers, um, you can produce more strength since the, there's a large resistance can be moved by a relatively small force. So I mentioned the wheelbarrow, right? So here's our axis, the big, long, the large resistance and a, the relatively smaller force. That's also the, um, what is behind a nutcracker, right? So you have the axis and then the resistance is close to that axis and then you're applying the force on um, these long levers, which allows you to crack the nut. And the same when loosening a nug, lug nut. We have a nice long lever arm that allows us to apply a relatively small force to loosen those lug nuts, which are pretty tight. In the human body, the only quote second class lever is if we're walking or rising up on our toes. And it's kind of a contrived second class lever system, but our axis of rotation is our toes. The body weight is acting next to it, close to that axis of rotation. And your muscle force of your gastroc soleus or your calf muscles are creating the force. So the resistance, our body weight is closest to the axis. And so we don't have to generate as much force from our muscles. But the majority of our joints are third class lever systems and they are at a mechanical disadvantage. So say for the elbow joint lifting just a small weight, you have your axis, you have your force very close to your axis. So it is at a mechanical disadvantage and it has to create a large force to lift this small resistance. The advantage of uh, third class lever systems are you can have a high velocity. And that high velocity uh, is an advantage for humans, both for our upper limbs, as we see here in the elbow joint, and our lower limbs, say our knee joint or hip joint, um, because we can uh, generate high velocities.